Tell you about Quidditch. Um, somehow it has actually become a real recreational sport. Describing it, gridiron or rugby with some dodgeball and wrestling thrown in. And you've got the dodgeball? Yeah, I've got the dodgeball. There's a one quaffle, which is what the chasers use, and they try to score goals. Team names, uh, you got the QUT Lycans. There's werewolves in London, uh, Glenelg Gargoyles, the University of Queensland Double Bees. The Australian Drop Bears is great. I'd love to be a Drop Bear one day. Fascinatingly enough, looking on the Student Union website before my first week of actual uni, saw that one of the clubs was Latrobe Quidditch. I instantly had to discover it. Uh, I was just following a friend around campus back home and I followed him to a Quidditch training and I didn't know what it was. I never really was allowed to do the Harry Potter thing as a kid. So I just stayed and participated because I was bored anyway. And it took me a few times coming back, but I fell in love with it. My favorite part would be the competitiveness between the teams on field and then off field, everyone's just friends with everyone. In terms of my perspective, I've always been a Harry Potter nerd my whole life, and even with Fantastic Beasts, it only strengthens my passion. And, you know, I have all the memorabilia at home. I reread, I rewatch, I even replay the video games that they release. And, you know, so somebody like myself that has such a deep passion for this and actually is interested in sports, it, I fit really well in with all these people. And, you know, they're, I just really feel quite welcome. It's just we're all friends and it's very community based. There's some of my teammates now. <laughs> hey Tom! I really liked um, the aspect of, you know, it being a, quite a fast paced sport and, you know, you, sometimes it's hard to keep up. You see like, oh, you know, now the Slytherin chase has got it, now the Hufflepuff, you know, then it goes back and forth against the teams and it's like, who's got the quaffle, you know? It's, bloody frustrating trying to actually keep up with that such a sport you know with all that speed you're going from you know the opposite side trying to stay on another player and then when they zoom off you have to keep up with them and when you've got the quaffle you've got to constantly be moving on your feet you know looking oh who can I pass to and that's what really makes it challenging it, it's interesting that we in Quidditch call this a broom but basically during the entirety of the game you actually have to run with a broom in between your legs holding it with one hand or the other. Most chasers usually have to pass or catch the quaffle with two hands so you've actually sometimes got to learn to run with um, <clears throat> the broom between your legs and suddenly be able to catch it when you're ready but it's, it's really great because it, it gives a sense of um, you know identity to the sport and people can recognize that it is Quidditch and even some people who've never heard of the sport but are big Harry Potter fans, they instantly know what they're playing on the field if they've just discovered it. In Quidditch we also have the ability to rap with players or in fact have a full on tackle. I could actually tackle them and if they're not letting go of the quaffle, I can actually hold that tackle and sort of like push them further away from their teammates, you know, if they're still holding on. And then with enough force I could actually bring them down to the ground. And we even have a specific way of falling. And with that specific way of falling, it allows that we don't get any broken legs or whatnot. <laughs> Snitch shorts. Well, that is when we come to the seeker's position, which is when about after 18 or 25 minutes in the game, depending on rule regulations, we usually have a snitch, which is a person wearing a giant pair of golden shorts, and it has like a sort of tennis ball and a sock velcroed on the back. And then their objective is to basically run around the field and fight off the seekers so as the Seekers cannot catch the Snitch for the longest duration possible. I reckon the other athletes don't take us seriously and it's really frustrating because we're working as hard as them, if not harder. Tell me about catching the Snitch. Uh, yeah, well, um, you know, despite being a newbie and this is either like round four or five, this is actually my third time that I did uh, playing as a Seeker for the Quidditch team in an official game. And what I found quite surprising was the fact that the, the guy that I was up against that was playing the Snitch, he was putting up quite a struggle as well as the Mudblood Seeker. However, after, you know, constant try and error, you know, I managed to actually catch the snitch, you know. He was caught off guard with the other seeker, I went in for a dive and 
managed to catch it, you know? It was like that moment of silence when, you know, I, I stumbled to the ground or sort of had fumbled, you know? And I look in my hand and see the snitch everybody saw and I'm like, did I just catch the snitch? Bit of a lack of respect because of the fact that the sport is very loosely adapted from something from a kid's book. You know, maybe I can relate it to specifically the Philosopher's Stone movie when he caught the snitch, you know. He spat it out of his mouth and he was looking at it in his hands. He couldn't even believe that he caught it. And then when everyone was, you know, cheering him for catching it, he was looking at everyone and then gradually getting happier and happier by the second. And I sort of had that similar feeling, I guess. Why Quidditch? Why not? Well, you know, it's fiction come to life, basically. <laughs> I feel like in the books, uh, the entire sport is written around Harry needs to do something. Uh, and watching and watching it in the movies, I feel that every player on every team breaks every rule. Harry Potter makes me believe in the impossible, you know, like what if what if one of us were actually to stumble to platform 93 quarters or, you know, somehow we're sailing across, you know, the seas near Europe and then we find the Hogwarts castle, like, oh shit, like, that's new. 